Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and I'm live on YouTube. So I look a little sweaty and a little bit red and a little bit running. I had to go see a patient, um, look at their scans in our one of our other buildings. And to get there, you have to go through the garage. And I am telling you, it is really hot out. I don't know what the temperature is, but it is really hot and humid. And when it's hot and humid, and you have to walk through a parking garage, which connects the buildings. It is really hot and humid. Anyway, uh, what I want to speak about today, and I'm, it's not going to be a very long talk, is the latest in AI and pancreatic cancer. And you know we've been working for five years, uh, Lust Garden Foundation, looking at pancreatic cancer for earlier detection. And we've done a lot of work, and we're continuing to do a lot of work in that regard. But I don't want to talk about what we're doing. I want to talk about two important things that I read. One was an article in gastroenterology from the Mayo Clinic. Now, one of the holy grails of early detection is, can you pick things up earlier than the radiologist? Now, sometimes we do pick up things earlier because people miss things. Remember, I've discussed with you how a dilated pancreatic duct is so important. Don't overlook a dilated pancreatic duct. You have to be suspicious, but that's not what I mean. We People often are diagnosed today with pancreatic cancer, but six months ago, three months ago, two years ago, they had another CT scan. Now, we've looked back at times, and sometimes you can see a tumor. There was an article in AJR from Japan a few months ago that showed really good results in looking back and subtle signs in the pancreas picking up early cancer. And these scans, which are not misses, but they're called pre-diagnostic scans. It's before you made the diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. Not necessarily a miss, but it may be so subtle you couldn't call it. So what... The group from Mayo did, they wrote an article, uh, a significant amount of patients, and they looked at the pre-diagnostic scans. Now, obviously, sometimes in retrospect, any of us can see something, but this wasn't the case. The, the radiologists read these as negative and read them correctly as negative, and then they used, ra they used radiomics to be able to pick up the tumors. So you could see that radiomics can potentially play a major role in detection because now you're not worrying about seeing a mass, but is there textural changes in the gland? Is there something in the, the actual data that can be used for early detection? And this Mayo Clinic article was very, very strong. So I think a very good body of work. They're now going to look at 12,500 patients additional in their cohort to see how well they really can do. But you could imagine... This is the, would be the greatest thing in the world. So it's not looking at patients with known pancreatic cancer or even rule out pancreatic cancer. If we could do this on routine patients, just do the radiomics, which is just basically circling the gland and looking for texture changes, if there's high accuracy, if there's high accuracy, then you're going to make a major difference. Now, a lot of work is being done for Fogelstein, uh, people at Illumina, Ken Kinsler, Papadopoulos, all the people at Hopkins with exact sciences looking at early detection with liquid biopsy across many different tumors. That's a major area of interest and excitement in imaging because it will affect us, but it's going to affect patient care. But this is another way of thinking about it. Can we pick up tumors earlier? And our push for radiomics, I've been talking about this for years now, and we haven't done what we needed to do at Hopkins, to be honest with you. But I think we're working closely with Microsoft now, and we will do what's necessary to make it work. Radiomics always has the challenge that what works well here doesn't work well at the other hospital. What works well on one data set doesn't work well on the second data set. There's lots of reasons, variability in terms of scan protocol, scanner type, all sorts of reasons. And I'm not going to go into the reasons. But I am going to say that if you could do radiomics, and radiomics does work, it will be a major advance because you can think about this in the liver. And people did do radiomics years ago in the liver and kidney looking for early tumors before the tumor was present visually imaged. So we have colon cancer and your liver looks good. But what if you do radiomics? Can you pick up a, a signal that suggests this tumor earlier? There's lots of things that can be done. There's a lot of information that can be gleaned work going on across the oncology space will be very important in that regard. Now, there was another article I wanted to talk about also on early detection. 
Um, I think you're going to see a lot of work coming from there. We are doing work with Microsoft, looking at cystic lesions, trying to figure out which are benign and which are malignant. Can we select the right patients who need to have surgery and not operate on everybody? Or can we improve our decision-making process? I think that's going to go a long way as well. So what I'm here to tell you today on Wednesday, July 27th, in a very, very hot and humid day, is that things are getting better. I think there is hope. Um, we need to bend the curve in pancreatic cancer. I think being able to get more information from our studies, being able to change what we're doing and how we're doing is important. And the references are on CT is Us. Take a look, read the articles, and think about it. And with that, I'll say have a great day.